Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about how to do branches in Git. Uh, Git is a source control system. See previous videos for um, more details. So I'm going to very quickly talk about what a branch is, what it's for, um, and the fact that there are two different views, two different world views of uh, how to deal with branches in source control systems. Um, then I'm going to take you through the Git commands to create a branch, switch between branches, and the simplest bits of merging. And very briefly show you how you can uh, visualize what's going on. So what is a branch? Well really it's it's the main point of a source control system. Um, most of the reasons you use a source control system uh, so that you can keep hold of several branches. There are other reasons as well. So what is a branch? It's a different version of the same code. One or more different versions uh, of the same code. <coughs> um, for example, the version that you've given to a customer and the version that you're working on now. Um, and in particular, the, it's a different version that we can work on um, separately. Uh, we can work on both versions. We, it's not just a copy of the code at a particular time. Um, it's a version that we can work on. Um, and also, changes that you make in one, you might also want to have in the other one as well, so you can merge from one to the other. Uh, well, there are two different ways of um, managing branches in source control systems. Um, in Subversion and Perforce, um, they're basically subdirectories um, of your main repository. Um, and in CVS, RTC and Git, they're treated as a completely different uh, um, set of code in, uh, in, in some separate dimension. So in Subversion and Perforce, uh, to make a branch, you've effectively you just copy uh, your entire source code into another directory. Um, in CVS and in RTC and in Git, um, you you can only see the one directory of your source code, and then you do a special command to switch so that you're looking at a different branch of it. Um, Subversion so and Perforce, I believe, have done it this way because it kind of feels, from an implementation point of view, it feels like a sensible thing to do because it um, effectively um, you've already got the uh, infrastructure there to copy a directory, so why not use it? But it means that your um, code, your merging code, has to be clever about knowing what's a copy of what. Um, and uh, Perforce does that reasonably well. Um, Subversion used to have trouble with it. Apparently it's better now, but um, I haven't used it um, in anger since then. Um, Anyway, the important thing to realize about this slide is that Git's on the right-hand side. Um, it uh, it treats a branch as a completely different thing from a directory. A branch is a whole new world uh, containing uh, another copy of your code, not just another directory. Um, another thing that you need if you're on the left-hand side is you need to be able to check out a subdirectory, uh, uh, not the whole tree, otherwise you'd be checking out all the branches, um, including old ones and things. So. Um, uh, Git is sort of anti the idea of checking out a subdirectory of a source code. Um, Git wants you to check out the entire repository, and if you've got sub areas of it, they should probably be separate repositories. And Git gives you functionality to combine multiple repositories together um, in a way that works rather nicely. So that would be the way you'd avoid that um, the problem of putting multiple things together. Anyway, uh, given that we now know how Git thinks about a branch, it's a uh, you type a command and your whole um, the, the whole of your working tree, the whole of your source code changes to to reflect um, to to reflect what's in the other branch. Uh, let's look at how we create a branch. So we've been working on this um, important project called Sayings. Um, we're going to continue working on it in this video. So cd into the Sayings directory. And then to make a branch, you type git branch and then the name of the branch. And in this case, I'm calling the branch release. 0 0.1 uh, and that's it. It'll happen very quickly. it feel like nothing's happened but actually you've now got uh, functionally you've now got another copy of your code which you can branch off in another direction and keep uh, keep both copies going merge changes between them. So um, just like you type git status to work out what on earth is going on when you're working with branches you type git branch just, just git branch with no arguments to work out what's going on and what it tells you here is there are two branches One's called master, and one's called release 0 0.1. <coughs> Excuse me. And the little star means uh, we are on the master branch. Um, and you can also notice if you type git status like we have at the bottom, 
um, it says on branch master so it tells you what branch you're on there okay so now we've made a branch we're going to want to switch to it so let's do that nice and easy git checkout release 0 0.1 the checkout command in git tells git to change your working tree to match something um, from history or something that's checked in, uh, in uh, into your repository um, in this case we're telling it to um, uh, check out a branch so it's going to switch over to um, switch your current working tree over to the code that um, is at the head of that branch and it, and it prints out for you switch to branch so you know what it's done so again we're going to um, work out what um, where we are by typing git branch and you can see the same two branches are listed master and release 0 0.1 but this time the star is next to release 0 0.1 meaning that you are now on the release 0 0.1 branch and if we do a git status you can see that it says on branch release 0 0.1 okay so that's all very well we can make a branch and switch between them but at the moment our two branches are identical because we haven't made any changes so um, let's imagine we have a bug we need to fix um, uh, for our customer so we've released um, release 0 0.1 given it to a customer they've reported a bug we need to fix it so we modify northern.txt and change the spelling of ebagum um, to the correct uh, northern spelling and then we commit uh, that change so the command at the bottom there is just a, a shorthand way of uh, doing a git add and a git commit all at the same time uh, and passing the commit message on the command line so we don't need to do it in a text editor I don't normally use uh, such a shorthand command when I'm really doing it but um, to fit it onto the slide I have and you'll notice as part of the commit message it tells you what uh, branch you committed onto you can see just after the square bracket it says release 0 0.1 so you know you're making changes in the release 0 0.1 branch which means when you switch back to master you won't see this change so let's do that git checkout master switches back to the branch master and if we write out the contents of northern.txt now that we've made that switch even though we've just edited northern.txt and changed the spelling of ebagum um, we've got the old spelling here um, and that's because we switched to the master branch and what that did was actually change the contents of our working tree to match the uh, what's going on in the master branch okay so now let's imagine we're doing some work um, it's just general development work uh, in our master branch so we're going to add a new saying at the bottom there we're going to do a git commit uh, notice that the the message that git gives us after we've done a git commit um, tells us what branch we're on and we're on the branch master which is always the name of the default branch unless you really go to effort to change it so we've made some changes to the same file in master and in release 0 0.1 so the important thing we need to do now is we need to pick up the bug fix that we made in in our release code so that it goes into the next release as well otherwise our customers won't be happy so uh, make sure we haven't uh, made any changes that we haven't committed before you do any merging you better do that and also before you switch branch do that and git will complain if you don't it'll tell you about it but um, um, the reason why is because it's going to change all those files so if you've got changes to those files which it, it hasn't tracked yet uh, and then you check out a different branch or merge it's going to modify those files and you have no idea um, what changes are caused by whom and it's a nightmare so make sure you haven't changed anything or anything you've done has been committed uh, we use git status to do that and it says nothing to commit so we know we're okay and then we're ready to do a merge so we're in we're on the master branch and in order to merge in stuff from the release 1.0.1 branch we just say git merge release 0 0.1 and that will merge everything uh, from release 0 0.1 into master you can pick and choose individual changes to merge in uh, but we're not doing that we're um, that will be a later video we'll talk about how to do that so for now we say git merge release 0 0.1 and um, uh, if git finds it straightforward to do this merge which it does in this case it will immediately pop up an editor for you um, saying please describe the merge that happened and in this case there's a default description which is merge branch release 0.1 um, uh, you may well want to add more detail about what exactly you're doing why you're merging at this moment so I might change this to say pick up bug fixes from release 0.1 um, and once you've typed in that message um, it prints out a little bit more about what it's doing um, git has different strategies for merging 
Um, uh, it works really well with the default strategy. I've never had to change or try a different strategy. It, it works remarkably well. You will recall we've done changes in in the release and the um, uh, the, the master version of Northern.txt and Git just happily merged them together. And we can check what it did by printing out the contents of Northern.txt and you can see there's the bug fix, ebagum is now spelled correctly but also our new saying at the bottom is there as well, so Git successfully merged it. Um, if, uh, if something went wrong, something uh, didn't merge correctly um, Git won't uh, immediately commit that as a, as a commit uh, it'll stop and ask you to do the merge manually. So I'm not going to go into much detail on this, but here is what will happen. Um, imagine that in, in the release branch and in the master branch we added a new file called pirate.txt containing uh, pirate sayings. Um, then when we do a git merge, uh, release 0.1 when we're on the master branch, that means we're merging release 0.1 into master, it's going to tell us there's a conflict um, it, the same file was added in both branches and it got different contents. Um, the way to resolve, or one way to resolve this conflict is to use git merge tool. And that will open up a three-way merge tool um, that allows you to manually choose which bits of which file you want. I'm not going to cover that anymore here, but uh, hopefully in a later video I will. Okay, so finally, um, in order to be able to understand what is going on with all these branches, you, you really want a way of visualizing what's happening and included with git um, is this tool git k so when you type git k it'll pop up a little ui and um, one part of the ui that i'm showing here um, is a diagram uh, showing all the commits and um, they the way they relate to each other so it get, the time moves upwards here so we start at the bottom um, and the uh, the, the first four changes that you can see at the bottom there are things that we did in the previous video uh, including a commit that I didn't do during the videos um, which I did later called Southern Sayings I was working on when the issue came in um, and then after that we made a branch so you can see the pink line divides after that fourth dot that's the moment we made the branch and extremely confusingly the change that we made first is above the change that we made second and also confusingly the four dots are shown below release 0 0.1 although in our head we think of them as being part of master and they were made on the branch called master in git's head git doesn't care about the past history before the branch point as far as it's concerned uh, those four dots are part of release 0 0.1 and part of master or at least part of the history of both those branches um, so the key thing to notice here is the branch point happens after that fourth change set and then on the master branch on the left we've got a, a dot um, in which we added the saying about cabbage and the release branch um, we fixed the spelling of the e by gum spelling uh, saying uh, and then the blue and the red lines show that a merge happened came and uh, merged into uh, the branch called master and the commit the yellow blob is that uh, merge commit where we've described what we did. So GitK can show you what happened in various branches and uh, obviously if you do more long-term work in a branch you'll have lots of blobs in the separate branches rather than just one in each of the uh, each side like we've got here. Um, and so that's how you can see what's going on with branches um, and there are also other tools which will give you slightly less ugly um, visualization. GitK is extremely functional. Okay, uh, please do uh, subscribe to the videos um, on the YouTube page, username AJ Balaam. And you can also follow me on Twitter, uh, read my blog. I've got, I normally have links to videos on my blog, but also other articles about uh, various things. Um, if you're interested in um, any of my open source projects, check out artificialworlds.net. Um, hopefully there's a subscribe button somewhere on the screen. Um, feel free to subscribe and uh, next time we'll uh, we'll look at more complex merges where there's a conflict to resolve where we're picking up individual changes and uh, stuff like that see you then